maybe not even Paul Nicholson, the supposed bad boy of the sport, but this crowd has really warmed to him. They raised the rafters when that double five went in. There he is, seeded 21. The lad from the northeast, and interestingly, Mervyn King was telling me up in the players' lounge that he was thinking of turning it in, going back to Australia. And Mervyn had actually said to him, don't do that, you've got too much to offer, hang in there, you have got a future in this sport. Well, that advice from Mervyn King has now bounced right back into his face. And King, there he is, he's been practicing and watching and just shaking his head almost with disbelief, I think at the way Paul Nicholson was putting those checkouts together. It was just stunning. It certainly was. 104, 121, 130 and 170. Look, all those finishes was when Phil Taylor was on a double. That was the difference in the game. He got through in the end. Well, Mervyn's been throwing really well right the way through this weekend. And against King, he of course has had the chance to just chill out upstairs practicing. Mervyn King while Nicholson was well all I sorts of emotions going through his head and somehow he's had to try and just calm himself down and concentrate on what is now in hand and that'll be easier said than done well I'm sure he's got his own techniques well, there's Mervyn's dad Shane in the final I'm sure Paul will do a professional job here as will Mervyn King has his earplugs in as well. There you can see the earplugs just drowns out that little bit of noise. Just let you concentrate just that little bit more. We'll just see though as the match unfolds whether or not there is some sort of backlash on Nicholson, whether or not he can reach those heights again. Well, that's always a danger, John, isn't it? After you've come through a semi final, after beating the world number one. The reigning champion and the favourite. Remember when Wayne Mardle beat uh, beat Phil in the uh, in the World Championships a couple of years ago? Great 180 from King, and then in the next round he played like a drain. That's right, that can happen. It's all down to concentration and focus. I'm sure he'll be okay, but the first 180 for King. He threw first. It was Nicholson that won the ball. One hundred and the superstition going second all the way through the tournament decided to give the throw to King. Well, double ten for first bite for King. Twins. Now a great opportunity maybe for Nicholson. These are the ones he was putting away for fun in that match against Taylor. That's right. Up until those final two legs, he hit ten doubles. Well. Double, and he's hit it again, another 105 finish for Paul Nicholson. Would you believe it, Alan? Would you believe it? Well, Mervyn King hit the 180, had three darts at the double. And again, Paul Nicholson, with that finish, he said he was working on his finishing game. It's certainly paying dividends here, John. Yeah, he certainly has. I don't know how he's been practicing it, but uh, whatever he's been doing, it's a technique which has been working. We heard him talking about his preparation and about motivation and concentration to get into the sort of zone that he needs to be in to wow. play at this world level. Well, it's certainly working. They've only met once before in the Players' Championship in Germany. On that occasion, Mervyn King posted a resounding victory. Different set of circumstances now, though. Very, very different. 100. Well, and also because you've been playing all over the long weekend and the practice in between, both these players should be in prime form for this final. I'm sure they'll muster up a treat. Mervyn King's been really solid with his darts all through the weekend. And he's started out well in this match as well. Averaging over 108. Sixty. Yeah, 102 average in the first game against James Wade. 100 against Plasson. And 96 plus against Joan and Osborne. It's almost 15 darts per leg all the way through the tournament. 70. It's a physically demanding ask though, having three matches on one day, 
It's very, very hot up there. Up there. The impression just watching from the sidelines that Phil Taylor was struggling a little bit with the heat, and Phil Taylor, uh, Mervyn King certainly was in uh, in his semi-final. Struggled last year, didn't he, as well? In the quarterfinals against Ronnie Baxter. He did. You require 36. Game shot in the second leg. Well, that's the Mervyn strike King. straight back against the throw. That's what Mervyn first. King required. So, honours even at this stage. Mm. We'll be happy with that. And three downs at the double in the first leg. We saw the 105 finish 100. for Nicholson. King breaks straight back. Finish work to so enjoy a pint at the tavern. It's hot, the atmosphere is electric. 140. Everybody's enjoying themselves tonight. 140. Oh, thank you. Just trying to concentrate on the darts, actually, my dear. Well, it can be a difficult sport this one at times. 140. Well, Mervyn King doing a professional job here, apart from those three darts at the double in the first leg. Everything else has been tip top. didn't get a chance to check what the odds were Mervyn prior to this match beginning but I would have thought that King would have been the betting favourite 15 to 8 on King 81. which is about right I would say you require and look at the whole tournament John he's been consistent and solid all the way through well, surely he's not going to get this one out is he Nicholson 164 he's going down the bottom oh he's got the first one another one for the bull oh surely not Wow, dear, dear me. They would, have, uh, they would have made some racket if that one had gone in. Double 20 for King. Game shot. 2 1. Well, he was taking those big shots out against Phil Taylor. As we saw, four or five big finishes.